When you are deciding what electric netting to purchase, there are a few things you need to consider. One is the overall length of uh, each section of netting. Uh, the other is the distance between the posts. Um, and then the last is uh, the tread-in style. Um, so for the overall length, the main question with that is how big are your paddocks that you need to be sending, setting up and uh, how strong are you? Do you mind if it's really heavy or is it nice to keep it light? It's really nice to have something that's easy to carry around in, uh, in the pasture. Um, you wanna make it as easy for yourself as possible to move those animals frequently. So I like a kind of shorter um, net length and then just use more nets. Um, but if it's a situation where you aren't going to be moving them as frequently, a longer net might be more convenient. The distance between the posts in the netting also has a lot to do with how heavy it is. So if you have more posts, it's going to make it more heavy. But if you're going over a slopey, rocky terrain, you might really need those posts to be close together, or you're going to have a lot of issues where either um, if you're going over a little hummock, it's gonna get scrunched up there. Or if you're going <laughs> over a valley, then you're gonna have a big gap underneath your fence. One trick I, I know is to, uh, you can sometimes throw a stick in between uh, the bottom wires of your fence and try and weight it down over those hills. But generally, uh, if you're going to be going over really bumpy terrain, I would recommend getting netting that has those posts closer together, even though it's a bit heavier. Uh, the last factor is the tread-in type. There are some that are like a little step and you can step it in. That's uh, great um, and can be easy. We have, for these, we opted for a single post that goes into the ground and that's better for our super rocky soil because we don't have to find a spot in the ground for two spikes. We only need a spot for one spike to go in and we hit it with a, with a rubber mallet. Um, so we decided to go with that for, for this field where we're going to be using the netting every year and it's pretty rocky, uh, tough soil. We just finished grazing this area with our pastured turkey. Uh, so now it's time to take down this fence. The turkeys are already in their new paddock with a new fence. Um, when I'm taking up down fence, um, I always like to lay it down on the ground first and then come along and pick it up. This allows me to accordion it in such a way that it stays really nice and tidy and the netting doesn't get stuck in the spikes at the bottom of the fence. Now I've got this whole uh, ream of pasture netting collected up and I'm gonna use these little shoelaces to hold all of the posts together and that way it'll stay nice and tidy uh, if I'm putting it away for storage or moving it somewhere else on the farm. Whenever I'm setting up netting, I always lay out all of the netting before I start putting any posts in uh, because you always wanna make sure that they're all gonna meet up in the right spot. So if you uh, get too overzealous and are pounding in all your posts as you go, you might find that, uh, that you have to take it all down in order to make it meet up. So um, if I'm laying out a system with eight fences, I have all eight fences laying out on the ground, maybe with just the corners post pounded in um, before, before I start really setting up anything. Um, so first I'll lay them all out. Uh, nice and tight so you get the distance that it's actually going to be taking up. It's always good to at least have the, the corner post pounded in so that you have something to pull against to make sure it's nice and tight. Now I've made sure that my netting's going to reach the corner here, I can adjust it a little bit if it's not straight enough. And uh, I'll stick this guy in and then I'll head back and start pounding my posts in. With uh, this type of netting, with just the single spike, you need in really soft ground, I can just pu uh, push it in, but the mallet helps a lot if it's 
rocky. So I'm gonna go back and finish. So I'm gonna pick up each post, look down the line on both sides. I like to give it a little tap with my foot at the bottom to pull it really tight. I kind of hold it steady with my knee to pull it even more tight. And then I pound it in nice and straight. If you have any trouble with it getting into the ground, then you can kind of move it around looking for, for some sort of deep rooted plant like a uh, dandelion or alfalfa plant. I pick it up, tap the end with my foot, hold it tight with my knee, pound it in. Once I've got my last post pounded in, I'm going to use these little shoelaces that we've got attached to the end of each post to physically connect it to the other fence. I like just tying a bow works for me. And that means that something uh, strong is holding it together so that here's the electrical connection. When I connect those, the, uh, any stress on the fence, if you step on it or something tries to go over it, um, it will have the physical connection of the shoelace here rather than pulling on the electrical connection and, uh, and breaking that apart and therefore making this net no longer electrified. So if a predator was to go over this or something, you would really want it to pull against that little string rather than the electrical connection. Then our fence is set up.